My name is Catherine Sarjo. I'm the Vice President of the New Jersey Council of County Colleges and the Executive Director of the New Jersey Community College Consortium for Workforce and Economic Development. Welcome to all of you all. We're so happy to spend the month of April using our collaborative meetings to highlight the work that all of the education partners did uh, together in our 10 centers of workforce innovation. We could not have uh, been as successful as we are in this initiative without all of you. We're excited to have over 1,200 partners. Um, and then we had a host of education partners roll up their sleeves and work in our Centers of Workforce Innovation to redesign and better connect and enhance career pathways focused on the four areas. We're so excited to now be able to highlight that incredible work and collaboration. The Pathways Initiative was a vision, a dream, and you all helped to make it possible. And in uh, for year one, we came out the gate running and we're looking forward to the same enthusiasm um, and also a switch to really introducing these pathways to our students, adult workers and job seekers. Um, so just welcome, uh, we're excited to have this meeting today. I'm going to now turn it over to Aaron Fickner, our president of the Council of County Colleges. Aaron. Good morning, everybody. And good morning, Catherine. Thank you for your leadership and for your team's hard work on this. This is a really exciting day. It's a day where, where our seven colleges who have worked together diligently um, in our Center for Workforce Innovation and Patient Care to develop new and innovative pathways that are aligned with the needs of industry. And I wanna thank all of our business partners who are on today and who have helped uh, guide this work. Most importantly, our partners at the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. And we'll hear from Chris Emmaholtz in a minute. Um, but also uh, the seven colleges that have, uh, community colleges that have come together at an unprecedented level to work together and I just want to recognize um, those seven colleges, the seven community colleges and their presidents, many of whom are with us today, uh, from Atlantic Cape Community College, led by President Gaba, Bergen Community College, led by President Friedman, Camden County College, led by President Pew Bassett, Mercer County Community College, led by President Preston, Sayac County Community College, led by President Rose, Rowan College of South Jersey, led by President Keating, and Union College of Union County led by President McMenamin. I know we have quite a few of those presidents with us today and I just wanna personally thank them for their vision and leadership and their willingness to work together. Uh, seven colleges, seven community colleges rolling up their sleeves to do some incredible work that you will hear today. Also at the core of this work is the broad partnerships that our colleges continue to build with high schools, community development corporations, four-year colleges and universities, workforce development partners. And you'll hear about all of those incredible partnerships that continue to develop. But thank you all for being here today. And uh, as Catherine said, most importantly, thank you to our seven colleges that came together um, with partners to do this really incredible work to build pathways to economic opportunity and mobility for more New Jerseyans. We know how important the patient care industry is, how health services is so critically important to our state's future. We've certainly seen that the last couple of years, and it is um, obviously very true that so many of people who are critical to our healthcare system in New Jersey uh, receive their education and training at one of our community colleges. So um, at this point, I would like to uh, introduce and, and welcome and thank our partners at the New Jersey Business and Industry Association who have been with us at the very beginning, helping to guide, um, advocate for, uh, influence, and inspire this initiative. It's been a pleasure uh, to work with Chris Emmaholtz and the team at NJBIA. Chris, thank you for your leadership and partnership, and I'll turn it over to you for some welcoming remarks, but looking forward to some incredible uh, reports today um, and some incredible work that I know will happen in the years to come. Chris, uh, turn it over to you. Good morning. 
Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you all of you that have made time this morning for uh, this important initiative that continues to yield fantastic results. And, and that's what I'm excited to see this morning, excited to hear about, and there's a lot to be proud of. Uh, BIA is proud to partner with all of you and partner with our community colleges that have done a fantastic job at working on the needs of our workforce. And what I want to say for all of this before we get into hearing about the successes that are exciting is that we need you. Um, first of all, NJBIA needs you. NJBIA believes there's nothing more important to the future of our economy, the future of New Jersey, than workforce development. And you all, the Career Pathways Program, our community colleges, our trade unions, our private career schools, our four-year colleges, Votex, private colleges, public colleges, four-year, you name it, all are important, important parts of that career pathways model, uh, the workforce development pipeline that we need to be successful. And it's one of the reasons why New Jersey is successful. It's an asset here. But if we don't strengthen that strength and we don't maintain that strength and we don't make it as robust as possible, we're not going to have the economy we want. And that's the second thing. We need you because the economy needs you. Um, healthcare is so, so important in our economy, whether it's the hospitals, the doctors, the nurses, um, insurance companies, the home health care aides, uh, our dentists, you name it. Uh, we need all of those things to be successful to have our economy and our healthcare part of the economy um, churning out the, the economic impact that it's supposed to be doing for our state. Uh, we need you because our patients need you. Um, healthcare is not just about the economy. It's not just about the workforce. This is actually where, where, where we're creating a workforce that is helping the people in New Jersey that need help. And, and that's important to think about, especially when we know the healthcare workforce is struggling right now and there's a lot of openings, a lot of vacancies, and BIA is trying to do a lot, the community college is trying to do a lot to make sure we're filling those vacancies and making sure that healthcare has all the people that they need. But this is necessary to help people. So thank you for that. Also, we need you because the state needs you. Um, this work, workforce development, is going to improve our economy, which is going to actually improve economic revenues that go back to the state and, and help get back to the county colleges and get back to um, all the folks that, that need it, get back to our schools, get back to our developmentally disabled, get back to our uh, property tax relief that we all want. <laughs> and we, we enjoyed those anchor checks recently. So, so the state, our economic um, engine, our tax revenues, all of that, we need the work that's going on right here. So we appreciate your, your efforts here. We know how valuable it is, and we're going to be seeing dividends, and we're going to be seeing economic successes. We're going to be seeing workforce successes. We're hopefully seeing successes that come back to your institutions and help your members and help your, uh, your students, your clients, you name it. So thank you for all of your work. Thank you for allowing BIA to be a partner to this, and we're excited about the partnership going forward. We look forward to continuing to work with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I referred to Chris at our collaborative meeting, or I referred to BIA at our collaborative meeting yesterday as our uh, flagship or uh, premier industry partner. Um, and certainly BIA has shown that they are with us and we appreciate that. So we are all here to hear about all the work that the education partners engaged in the Center of Workforce Innovation for Patient Care have embarked upon. Um, we want to acknowledge our education partners. As you can see, we have four-year colleges and universities engaged with our community colleges to do this work, to connect these pathways, to ensure that all students uh, and adult learners are able to gain credit for their training, be it workforce development training or academic training, uh, training, and move along a pathway toward greater prosperity and promotability and thrive. Um, and so we're excited about these pathways. Our, we also would like to acknowledge our industry partners. Uh, again, this whole initiative was created with the concept of being led by the voice of industry. And so we are very thankful for our industry partners who have taken the time to advise and counsel, confirm um, and inform our education partners uh, about these pathways and the skills uh, that they need in new hires and in incumbent workers, just so that their organizations may prosper and serve um, their constituents. So we're very thankful and appreciative. Our first pathway 
is the Certified Nursing Assistant, CNA, to Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Yes, you can start in a workforce development training program and end up with a bachelor's degree. Um, and Janet Albright from Passaic County Community College is gonna take us through that pathway. Janet. Thank you, Catherine. And thank you to everyone for joining us. I will be speaking about the nursing pathway and this is a truly collaborative project. So I represent Passaic County Community College, but on this initiative, I worked with Bergen County Community College, Camden County College, and also our staff here at Passaic County Community College. So again, it was truly collaborative. And if you could put your questions in the chat, perhaps my colleagues will join in and answer some of those questions at the end. So again, we have the chat function for that. So as mentioned, these are definitely in-demand opportunities for uh, workers, but it's also in-demand with our students. They're very interested in nursing and this pathway. And also for us as consumers of healthcare, right? It's very important that we have highly skilled, well-trained workers. So all of our, our three colleges all have allied health programs. They all have nursing programs. So this was not new for us. This was to strengthen and expand programming. And as mentioned, a lot of work and a lot of research and meetings went into this project, but our presentation today is going to focus on specific pathway connections that we made. So the first connection is a logical one, right? It's starting at the, the start with our young students. So how do we connect students to this pathway. And here are two specific connections. So Bergen uh, County College created a healthcare explorer program, and that's designed to expose young students to healthcare and the different pathways. So our young students may not be aware of opportunities in healthcare. They may have a very limited view of healthcare, that it's just doctors and nurses. They don't understand the uh, length and breadth of this career pathway. And this is also, um, this information can be provided to families, to career counselors. So again, this is an opportunity to expose students at the beginning of the pathway. And students don't off, may not have a realistic idea of what this pathway entails. Maybe something else uh, would be better for them. So again, this is to uh, make a connection at that beginning of the pathway with our young students. In addition, Bergen Community College developed a Health Profession Smart Start program also for students, and this is more for career readiness. So if they are starting on that pathway, how do we prepare them better for that pathway? Soft skills, uh, some foundational knowledge, and what's nice about this, it's a hybrid program. It can be online, it has uh, on-campus components and uh, different, uh, programs will be piloted in the summer. So again, these are two specific examples of connections and these are adaptable and they can be uh, remodeled for different uh, schools and different programs. So next slide, please. So in addition to providing students and families uh, with information to make informed decision, we also looked at how can students earn credentials and credits along the way. So we know there's a large percentage of students that don't complete their education, but they may have a lot of skills and learning that, that uh, are, are tied to these pathways. So here's, here's an example, and I'm gonna start with the infographic. So this is also something that was developed. How do we develop materials to inform people? So the infographic can be used again with students, um, with career counselors, with family members, different areas along the pathways where someone can earn credits. Even employers, if, if somebody has a good uh, staff person that they wanna move along, on, keep them on the career pathway, move them along. And again, all this information can be shared because rather than having 18 community colleges developing their own materials, we have been uh, working on some of those materials. So here are some specifics, again, some connections. Camden County College partnered with Rutgers to determine that CNA credits are eligible to be transferred into the Bachelor of Health Science degree program. 
so students can earn CNA credits at Camden and then use that as an entry point into higher education in the field of nursing. So again, motivation, uh, credit, recognition for what they've done. And another example is that Camden and Rutgers amended their premier partnership agreement to include RN and BSN for current LPN and RN students to be able to pursue a BS degree in nursing. And again, this infographic was created uh, as part of this work. Next slide, please. So again, talking about credit for experience and uh, learning, here's another specific connection. So we looked at the prior learning assessment for apprenticeship related technical instruction. So the three colleges have been involved for the past four years in a federal scaling apprenticeship grant. And that was an opportunity to, for us to look at this. Can students get credit for what they're doing? And the typical apprenticeship model, which the CNA does follow, is that students get 144 hours of related technical instruction. So that's instruction in the classroom. But they also get 2,000 hours of work in the field. So it's competency-based. They get a mentor. It has to be documented. So 2,000 hours is a lot of training. That's 40 hours a week for 50 weeks. So can they get credit for it? So uh, Camden partnered with Thomas Edison to complete a credit evaluation prior learning assessment for specifically for the related uh, technical instruction and also for the on the job learning. So it was recommended that they earn two credits for the RTI and also the on the job learning has value, but because it can be so different depending on the employer, that would be evaluated in a portfolio assessment. So again, uh, a CNA may do a lot of related work, can that be evaluated and credit be given for, for, in a rigorous process for this learning and for this experience. So here's another example of the prior learning assessment. Again, this is a career pathway. How can we connect? How can we strengthen? These are things that uh, we hadn't looked at before. So we also partnered with Thomas Edison to complete a credit evaluation, a prior learning assessment for a pre-apprenticeship healthcare boot camp that was sponsored by a grant through the New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development. And our work continues because uh, Thomas Edison is still in the process of evaluating this. It has a uh, home health aid, has CPR, and um, other components. So the evaluation will be completed next month. So another connection on the, the pathway that we looked at is professional development. So again, uh, we worked on infographics to be able to educate and inform people, also to be able to share resources so we don't all have to create uh, our own information and our own guides. So something else that was created was a curriculum implementation guide, and it has links to various agencies that need to be contacted through the implementation process, starting with programs from CNA to associates degrees, and it's customizable. Anyone can use it and edit it, and additional materials were created to assist in the process of program justification, including an employer questionnaire regarding workforce needs. So again, a lot of materials and um, information developed that can be shared. So a lot of work has been done, but a lot more needs to be done because this is such an important pathway. And yesterday we met, we're already working on year two activities. And the other, uh, benefit of this project was we had the opportunity to work together, learn from each other, make connections with other educational institutions, employers. So we found it a very valuable project. Thank you, Janet. We know that it took all of the colleges involved um, and working on this pathway to get those connections um, completed. And we appreciate 
all of that work. Um, and while we aren't recruiting for bachelor candidates, as was mentioned in the chat at community colleges, certainly we wanna provide a pathway, a clear pathway for all community college students to make their way to a bachelor's degree if in fact they want to continue their education and career path forward. Um, and we know given the demand for nurses, certainly that is um, something we want to encourage. And so thank you again for all your work. Moving on to pathway two, certified clinical medical assistant, CCMA, we have Hannah, I'm sorry, Hannah Hanna from Camden County College, who in fact was the administrative partner for this center. So she has been very busy <laughs> for a long time and certainly has aided me uh, in, in the work of the center and encouraging the center. So thank you, Hannah. Take it away. All right. Well, good morning and thank you, Catherine. Um, my name is Kana Hanna. I'm the Associate Dean of Workforce Development and Continuing Education at Camden County College. And as Catherine said, I have served as the administrative partner for the Patient Care Center throughout year one of this initiative. Um, so I'm excited to speak today on behalf of the Certified Clinical Medical Assistant Pathway team, and I'm hoping that I do everyone's great work justice in the, the brief recap of our accomplishments. Um, as Janet said, please put any questions in the comments. Um, myself and all of my teammates will be able to answer those questions as we get to the Q&A session. Um, so I wanted to just start by briefly explaining why our team selected this pathway. So our purpose was really threefold. Um, we were focused on increasing career awareness and student preparedness, increasing our training capacity throughout the state in order to meet the growing need for MAs and to ensure that our MAs were able to receive the necessary recognition for their hard work in order to seamlessly continue their education if they choose to do so. So to start, we knew it would be essential for us to form strategic partnerships to help us complete this work. One such partner is the Rowan University Rutgers uh, Camden Board of Governors, also referred to as the Joint Board. So the Joint Board supports programs that provide a gateway for, for residents in Camden and South Jersey to access education, training, and employment opportunities through partnerships with the region's expanding eds and meds institutions. The CMA Pathway Program is a collaborative effort between um, many different entities, including the Joint Board of Camden County, or the Joint Board, Camden County College, Center for Family Services, Camden Coalition of Healthcare Providers, Camden City School District, and various healthcare employers. So prior to the pandemic, there was actually a summer session held for students entering into CCC's CMA program. However, we realized um, there were many missing components that were really necessary to aid in the success of the program participants. And so over the past year, uh, Corey Hoffman, who is also on this call today, thank you, Corey, um, he is from the Joint Board. He has spoken with key stakeholders as well as participants that were part of previous iterations of this process to better understand the needs and challenges of the students. So with the information that Corey gathered, he was able to design a comprehensive summer bridge program with newly established partnerships, uh, which incorporated educational support to keep students engaged in programming, as well as personal support designed to help mitigate some of the barriers that have prevented students from successfully completing in prior years. So the new program curriculum was developed in partnership with Center for Family Services. They modified parts of their in-demand program to focus on the healthcare workspace. And Camden Coalition, who modified their Skills Lab series for a younger audience. So the Summer Bridge program also incorporates uh, tours to CamCare, Cooper Health, and Virtua, as well as conversations with HR departments regarding best practices for interviewing, navigating the hiring process, and career advancement opportunities. Uh, students received a crash course in anatomy and physiology and medical terminology from a Camden City School District administrator who oversees allied health programs at the district. 
Um, and for the Camden City High School graduates that are selected to participate in the Summer Bridge program, the Joint Board provides paid training, one-to-one -one mentorship, and full tuition for the duration of the CMA program. So graduates of the program come out and are very well positioned for employment in the growing healthcare sector less than one year after their high school graduation with opportunities for continued education and career advancement. And of course, you know, it's, you can't say it enough, but um, they come out with no student loan debt, which is great um, at this point in time when, when those debt ceilings are very high for students. Um, in summer 2022, 15 students attended the Summer Bridge program for six weeks throughout the months of July and August uh, for three days a week from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The program ran at the Joint Health Science Center in downtown Camden. And upon completion of the Summer Bridge program, 14 of the 15 students enrolled reported that they felt prepared to enter into Camden County College's program and the same 14 said that they understood the steps they needed to take to advance in their career beyond the CMA role. So as a result of the Joint Board's participation in this initiative, they have created materials that will assist in the replication of this model within other regions of the state. Uh, next slide, please. So the next action item that we identified was the expansion of program offerings throughout the state. So Union College of Union County reviewed and updated the non-credit workforce development training program for certified medical assistant. Uh, the designed CMA program is a 620 hour training program providing instruction in the fundamentals of the role of a medical assistant. Uh, job development and clinical internship are included as essential elements of that program. So throughout the process, um, instructional materials were reviewed and updated to align with current practices in the industry and certification test plans. Uh, this was done specifically to ensure that programs that are being implemented are doing so with industry relevance at the forefront. It also takes into consideration that the course content that is needed for uh, certification preparation. So uh, upon successful completion, of their coursework, students will earn three industry valued credentials from National Health Career Association, also referred to as NHA. And these credentials include certified clinical medical assistant, the certified phlebotomy technician, certified EKG technician, as well as BLS CPR certification from the American Heart Association. So as a result of their work in this pathway, Union, again, has developed instructional materials that can be used to replicate this training program throughout the state of New Jersey. Um, and some partnering institutions have already expressed an interest in utilizing this, these materials to implement uh, incumbent worker training through an apprenticeship model to assist our local uh, healthcare providers in upskilling individuals who may already be working in their healthcare system, but who express an interest in transitioning to patient care. Uh, next slide, please. So Camden County College partnered with Thomas Edison to complete the college credit evaluation and prior learning assessment for the, the clinical certified, certified clinical medical assistant apprenticeship related technical instruction. Um, adoption of this recommendation would allow CCMA apprenticeship program graduates as well as current medical assistants that hold the CCMA certification through NHA with the opportunity to earn nine college credits. In addition, through this evaluation process, and as Janet mentioned uh, previously, Thomas Edison is recommending that the on-the-job learning portion of the apprenticeship program um, follow the portfolio assessment process at the community colleges to determine if additional college credits may be earned. Um, it's not something that they're able to establish in advance, just based on the various nuances um, in on-the-job learning from employer to employer. Next slide, please. So for our more traditional students who are not enrolled within an apprenticeship program, we also felt it necessary to ensure their eligibility to obtain credit for their training um, with, at our community colleges. So utilizing the Certified Clinical Medical Assistant Program curriculum, Atlantic CAPE has completed a full evaluation of the program and design specific credit courses that will serve as program equivalencies. 
So prior to this initiative, Atlanta Cape students who achieved the CCMA credential received nine PLA credits towards the health science degree. But these credits were listed on their transcript as a block credit with no coursework or grade assigned, um, which made this very difficult for students to transfer and led to very few workforce development students taking advantage of the opportunity to utilize these credits and complete the health science degree. So following a more equitable and detailed evaluation of the program curriculum for credit worthiness, three credit level equivalency courses were created for a total of 14 credits. The three new credit level equivalency courses, when appropriately articulated, will each appear with a course grade on a credit level transcript. These courses uh, that were developed are titled Professional Office Procedures for the Medical Assistant, which is equivalent to two credits. The medical assistant or the medical assisting administrative and clinical procedures, which is equivalent to nine credits, and the fundamentals of phlebotomy, which allows the certified uh, phlebotomy technician credentialed student to receive three credits. So, to ensure a seamless process for students, um, Atlantic Cape developed two internal articulations between the non credit and credit divisions at their uh, institution that allow for 17 credits to be articulated to the health science degree. The first internal articulation details the process by which the students receive the 14 credits that I just mentioned. And then the second internal articulation details the process by which students can receive an additional three credits for the medical terminology course. The three new credit level equivalency courses are listed in NJ Transfer. And current four-year articulations with Rutgers Camden Health Sciences and Health Administration degrees were updated to include the newly created three credit level equivalency courses. So information sessions um, are going to take place with workforce development students in the near future to make them aware of these opportunities. And again, um, don't mean to sound like a broken record, but these implementation resources are available to assist others in replicating this model. Uh, next slide, please. It was also um, really important for our pathway group to provide opportunities to students who are enrolled or who are enrolling into our high school equivalency programs. So throughout the past year, Rowan College of South Jersey developed a medical assistant integrated education and training model specifically for students in or entering their high school equivalency program. Um, an integrated education and training or otherwise known as an ITE program combines education and job skill training in order to transition adult learners beyond adult basic education and through a career pathway that can offer individuals with job training and eventually gainful employment. So the medical assistant IET combines front end clinical medical assisting skills while also including mathematics and language arts instruction and workplace learning skills. So by the conclusion of the IET, students will have the foundational knowledge to enter a certified clinical medical assistant training program, apprenticeship program, or potentially entry-level employment. Um, at the completion of the IET, students will receive the CPR credential from the American Heart Association as well. Um, RCSJ currently plans to pilot this program in fiscal year 24. And again, um, I just keep stressing because we were very mindful and intentional in making sure that the development of um, implementation resources was part of this project so that we could replicate these uh, model programs at other institutions. Um, and final slide, please. So lastly, our pathway group felt it necessary to create the proper marketing materials to detail some of the opportunities available um, based on the work that we have done. So a medical assistant apprenticeship marketing toolkit was developed to ensure that employers and job seekers could be made aware of apprenticeable occupations in the healthcare industry, particularly, of course, with medical assistant. Uh, the goal for the medical assistant apprenticeship marketing toolkit was to ensure that tangible materials were created to make job seekers aware of work and learn opportunities, as well as to make employers um, or to help employers understand 
um, another method to fill their medical assistant talent pipeline by upskilling their current workers as well as on-ramp new employees. So during the toolkit creation, Rowan College of South Jersey collaborated with the U.S. Department of Labor's Office of Apprenticeship to gain feedback on the content and products being created throughout this initiative. Um, and the final toolkit provides flyers, checklists, brochures, banner ads, and social media graphics, all of which can be indiv individually branded uh, by an educational institution or community-based organization to use. So I know we have a jam-packed agenda today, so I'm gonna stop myself there, but please feel free, as I said before, to put any questions into the chat. Our team would be happy to answer during the Q&A session. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kana. That was a lot of information, and that's why we are encouraging everyone to type their question into the chat when they think about it, um, and we will get to answer all of those questions at the end of uh, the presentation of the four pathways. We are now on the fourth pathway uh, for mental and behavioral health, and we have Chelsea Escadero from Camden County College, who is going to present the work of uh, the center with regards to this third pathway. Chelsea? Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending the Patient Care Pathway Initiative. I am a part of a team from the Mental and Behavioral Health alongside my group members, Andrea Bash, Shan Burkhoff from Mercer County Community College, Randy Davidson from Rowan College of South Jersey, and myself, Chelsea Scudero from, um, from Camden County College. So for our first pathway, um, our connection to high school for dual enrollment, Camden and RCSJ worked together to create a dual enrollment addictions pre-vocational training program. While creating this program, we worked alongside Professor Leroy Stanford from Camden County College, who's one of the addictions professors. He began helping us to implement the program. Within this program, high school students could begin to obtain either an associate's degree in human services or addictions. While students are in high school, they will be able to take Psychology 101 and or Human Services 101. This provides the opportunity for these students that are in high school to open the door to either earn themselves a certificate or an associate's degree at an accelerated rate. Additionally, the program has been approved by the New Jersey Mental Health and Addiction Services. You can go to the next slide, please. The purpose of this connection was to establish a new dual enrollment pre-vocational training program approved by the New Jersey Mental Health and Addiction Services. This dual enrollment program for connection to high school was focused on introductions to addictions and behavioral health aid. Camden additionally looked into dual enrollment programs such as psychology as working with this pathway. Camden worked with Professor Stanford again to create the implementation plan that can be shared amongst other colleges looking to do the same. You can go to the next slide, please. There will be, um, for this slide, there will be two action items of the connection to community college for credit. Camden, college, Camden County College determined the existing certified alcohol and drug counselor credit courses meet the requirements for the existing CADC apprenticeship related technical instruction. The apprentices would be eligible to participate in the addictions degree program with the intent of taking only 24 credits that are needed to obtain the CADC certification. These students are able to further their academic careers by obtaining a degree in addictions, but will need to take the appropriate additional courses to earn their associate's degree. Currently, there are nine students that are currently enrolled in the CADC apprenticeship. The students in the current program have the option of taking courses in person or online. The potential collaboration with Camden County College via the online platform for CAD certification is available to those who are interested. Mercer County College, uh, Mercer County Community College, and CCC discuss the potential for colleges to work together al and allow the students from Mercer to attend virtually. However, Mercer will be working in conjunction with Bergen, um, Bergen Community College to offer CADC through the Center for Continuing Studies. The students will earn 18 college credits and will, will be 
college credits towards an Associates of Applied Science in Health Sciences. You can go to the next slide, please. Within this deliverable, Rowan College of South Jersey revised the existing non-credit workforce development, de development training program for mental health technicians and additionally created the mental health support technician training program. This was completed with the partnership with New Jersey Mental Health Association and was evaluated on the subject matter by expert Dr. Warren Wallace, licensed psychotherapist and owner of Apple Counseling in Sewell, New Jersey. The mental health tech support technician curriculum outlined has been submitted for PLA review to the Dean of Compliance at Rowan College of South Jersey. The mental health support technician curriculum provides the opportunity to earn two separate certifications, mental health first aid, which is an eight hour course, and the wellness recovery action planning seminar one, which is an 18 hour course. With the additional support from the New Jersey Mental Health Association, there are options to have a plethora of different informational workshops for mental and behavioral health. These workshops are completely customizable and will be able to help all individuals from different age ranges. Additionally, this information is also embedded in the Employer Apprenticeship Toolkit. Furthermore, RCSJ aligned the curriculum for the Certified Peer Recovery Specialist with the apprenticeship standards. These students will follow the 144 hours of related technical instruction and 2,000 hours of on-the-job learning. This curriculum was submitted for approval from the US DOL Office of Apprenticeship in the collaboration with our employer partners, Center for Family Services. You can go to the next slide, please. Within the next pathway, our team explored a streamlined process to award credits for students who complete the community health worker related technical instruction. Camden will be awarding credits with the passing of competency exam at the conclusion of the training program. We understand that this method may not be easily adaptable by other educational institutions that may have an interest in offering this opportunity to students. To support this concern, as well as other PLA concerns, we have partnered with Thomas Edison State University. TESU was contracted to aid in the credit evaluation process. We are expected to hear the credit recommendation on or before May 1st for this program. You can go to the next slide, please. Throughout this portion of the pathway for adult literacy, Rowan College of South Jersey created mental health and behavioral health career awareness workshops to provide adult learners with knowledge of the industry and career opportunities. These workshops on mental and behavioral health careers have been outlined and included in our employer apprenticeship toolkit. The completed process for connect to adult literacy training, training consists of five items. One, investigate existing content for updating. Two, decision to update and develop new. Three, gather employer input on content. Four, create a course outline and or syllabus. Five, create course content. The optimal goal of the adult literacy program is to assist adults and students to earn skills in communication, teamwork, integrity, problem solving, work ethic, and initiative. This integrated education and training program combines both education and job skills that are needed for success. Extru instruction of reading, mathematics, oral and written communication, and computer, computer skills for students reading below the ninth grade level or within the national reporting systems level one to four will be available as well. The reading instruction will be focused on reading skills, primarily on applying research and reading instruction for adults. The academic performance will be measured for adult literacy using the test for adult basic education. You can go to the next slide, thank you. This is our last pathway connection for mental and behavioral health. Within this portion of our assessment, Rowan College of South Jersey developed the registered apprenticeship, registered apprenticeship and mentorship program toolkit that's also referred, refer, referred to as the RAMP toolkit. If you're interested in seeing this toolkit, please reach out to our partner, Randy Davidson, and she will be lovely to share it with you. This toolkit was created with, within the partnership with New Jersey Mental Health Association. The purpose of this toolkit is to have a concise location to find everything you will need regarding pre-apprenticeship, apprenticeship programs, the educational pathway from high school to college and career mapping 
within different levels of education and certifications. This toolkit was created in collaboration with employer partners from New Jersey Mental Health Association and representatives from the US DOL Office of Apprenticeship. The best part of this toolkit is that it's completely customiz customizable to your needs and to all different academic fields. If there are additional colleges that are interested, that have, the option is available to you. So I want, just wanna thank, say thank you um, about our pathway findings and we're excited for pathway connections for you too. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> Year two, um, that's now really, right? I don't know, <laughs> it's certainly starting soon. Um, thank you so much for all that hard work, for those partners engaged. Um, this is what you all are building, right? The community, the ecosystem, the infrastructure um, to connect all of the education and training in New Jersey so that a student, an adult learner, an incumbent worker, a job seeker uh, can get training anywhere, but ultimately receive college credit so that they are allowed to move toward greater credit uh, at degree attainment. So thank you for that hard work. Our fourth and final pathway is for respiratory care. And Susan Barnard from Bergen County, I'm sorry, Bergen Community College will be presenting that pathway. Susan. Great. Thanks, Catherine. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Susan Barner, and I'm the Dean of Health Professions here at Bergen Community College, and we offer a respiratory care program here. Uh, we've been working across the consortia uh, or across our, our patient care center, but particularly with Union College. And you'll see, may I have the, the first slide, please? And you'll see that our pathway really focused on the non-credit. We focused in the four-year university and we focused in professional development. So the first area that we looked at is one that's very near and dear to my heart, something called Clifton Strengths. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it or not, but Clifton Strengths is used over in over a thousand colleges and universities. And what it does is allow students to recognize their potential or what's right about them, what's strong about them. So often we look at deficiencies and what needs to be improved. This allows them to look at what can I do and how can I best perform? And this will have a direct impact on employment. And so it looks at campus engagement, it looks at campus culture, increasing retention, which is so important to all of us, improving well-being, developing leaderships. We just had this for our own uh, leadership team here at the college. It guides pre-college advising and helps students consider post-graduation possibilities. And so we've been using this in health professions in different programs since about 2018. And we use it as employee readiness, but then started to back it up to within the curriculum so that students could really work off of what was strong about them and what motivated them to see the best in what they do. Because a lot of times students only focus on what they do wrong and that that's not always the best way to move forward. And so um, this we've been working with our faculties who have taken this as well. And our leadership, it's allowed to create a strengths-based academic environment. And this isn't an online assessment, it's through Gallup. And we administered, actually, if you'll look here, the, the um, assessment is uh, uh, just, it takes about 20, 25 minutes to do. But we had an, a two-day on-campus champions program where we brought 24 faculty and advisors with a representative from Gallup onto campus to teach our faculties to be champions of the strengths-based initiative. Then we administered this to our 38 respiratory care students. And we had a discussion right away about the impact of this and we'll be having a workshop coming up in the next few weeks prior to graduation related to job readiness, resume writing, and how they can bring these strengths to the next steps in employment. 
So it's about finding what's right about them and, and looking in the environment that a, a clinical environment offers them at where they're going to be the best fit. Traditionally, Gallup has looked at this as workforce performance and brought this into the educational arena so that we can, again, look at what's right about students. And we got a lot of good feedback from the students. They were amazed at how closely aligned their strengths were because basically they put the information in and Gallup has a methodology that they put it through an algorithm and give them their top five. There are 34 strengths that can uh, come from this in four domains. And in those domains, you have those that execute, those that influence, those that have relationship building, those that have strategic thinking. And so in building teams at your workforce um, and employment areas, this really helps with uh, team engagement. Next slide, please. The next area we worked with was connection to four-year colleges and universities. Um, Bergen Community College and Union College looked at this, as well as uh, Brookdale and County College of Morris. And we created two plus two articulation agreements. So this is for degree advancement. Respiratory uh, care practitioners or respiratory therapists will graduate from the two-year associate program and be able to advance their degree, particularly with Rowan's Uni Rowan University, and I know Roberta Harvey is on this call, and with their Bachelor of Science in Respiratory Care. And so this is an articulation agreement with Rowan, and it's scheduled to begin in fall of 23. And then it's really important that we want to ensure that associate of applied science degrees in respiratory care are both skilled and eligible for employment and that industry roundtables uh, was conducted with the human resources department of three major hospital systems, looking at RWJ Barnabas Health, Hackensack Meridian Health and, Health, uh, and Atlantic Health Systems. It's very important throughout all of healthcare, but in, in this particular pathway, that we are engaged and connected to our employers. They're part of our program advisory committees. We have consist, they're part of our clinical affiliate um, representatives and they engage our students all the time. And so it's important for them to let us know what enhancements need to be made to curricula, what kinds of things they're looking for within next generation practitioners. And so those connections and those partnerships are going to be critical to the success of not only the program, but in preparing next generation workforce. Next slide, please. And so throughout the implementation of this Pathways Initiative, as I said, prospective employer partners are continuously engaged. And that's a really important piece. Um, as a result of these engagements, Union College has initiated uh, two, uh, two new clinical affiliation agreements with Atlantic Health Systems and Care One. And so as part of the employer engagement initiative, Union College has also developed a respiratory assistant. And this was to develop a direct pathway for future employment opportunities. This is someone who will work within the respiratory care department or within the hospital setting that is looking at equipment, maintenance, and um, working to, to develop their interest as well as their skills, and then go on to be, uh, be engaged in a respiratory care program. So these employer agreements will continue after the completion of the initiative to make sure that programs continue to establish these conversations with employers and look to what kinds of opportunities may be in the forefront. We also have model agreements that were created that would allow any institution in higher ed the ability to customize for future use. So this Pathways team has developed materials that explain and benefit the industry partnership. And as it notes, the viability of the respiratory care program in the preparation of students for employment to aid in the process of employer engagement. So in closing, um, 
we want to thank those that worked with us and thank our our partners, our industry partners, and note that it is so critical, as I've mentioned, to have that continuous partnership and those continuous conversations in developing our next generation professionals. So thank you. Thank you, Susan, so much. Uh, we all became acutely aware of respiratory care during the pandemic. Um, and so we understand that this is an in-demand occupation and we're thankful that the partners in the center are creating a connected pathway um, for individuals to pursue. So thank you so much. So now uh, we wanna open this up to Q&A. We understand that uh, because this was the largest of the 10 centers of workforce innovation, for obvious reasons, I would say, since it is focused on patient care, um, such an important field. Um, we presented a lot of information today. Um, and so we want you all to have, all of our partners to have the opportunity to ask questions. I will state, I did put it in the chat, but I will reiterate that in fact, uh, we're probably just about complete building an electronic repository database on the njpathways.org website so that all of the um, materials, the implementation guides and the like, all the documentation for the work done in the centers uh, will be available to any education partner uh, and community-based partners to take advantage of. This is truly a statewide pathways initiative and we, um, are excited about it, sharing all of the work that was completed. Um, I will start off with a couple of the first questions that were actually put into the chat. Uh, Roberta Harvey from Rowan University, thank you. Uh, one of our consistent uh, and substantial partners in this center and others. Um, I see that she kind of gave some complimentary remarks in the chat, thank you. We do have a question um, with regards to the to CNA program. The question is what courses at Rutgers does CNA course mirror? Um, and so I will, I guess, ask Janet or one of her colleagues to respond to that question. Catherine, uh, we agree that Fahia Richardson. Yes, Sahia. Uh, Hi. Yes. Sahia. Sahia, I can we'll try to that. get you. We'll okay. try to get you pinned. Okay. <laughs> so people can um, see you. Okay. So, uh, you know, we, well, I met with Rutgers uh, Camden to actually to explore whether or not the CNA would fit into their BSN program. Um, and then after, you know, conversations, we realized that it really wasn't fit in there because they needed to prioritize their nursing courses. But they did say that, um, you know, it could be an elective in their health science uh, major. So they didn't say a specific course, but, you know, uh, the an elective um, placement would be appropriate. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Um, we have another question, um, which may relate more to the electronic repository. Um, can you repeat who to contact to get the apprenticeship information toolkit? Uh, it sounds like a valuable resource. It is. Um, and I will ask Chelsea if we can pin Chelsea to maybe um, jump in just with the contact for right now, but understanding all of these materials, including the toolkit the two toolkits created by the center will be available online on our website. Chelsea? Hello, I can put Randy um, Randy's email in the chat so that you can reach out to Randy to get the toolkits if she has it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and can we just pin Roberta Harvey? <laughs> She has some information to share. <laughs> Roberta, you know what? Next time I'm just going to put you on the agenda. How about that? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I so see you I put in something about the degree advancement program. I yes, I did. Um, just a quick update because I, I saw this. The slide said that um, pending accreditation, which um, we now have provisional accreditation right. for um, both of our respiratory care programs that will um, and both will. Uh, we're both we're accepting applications for both of those um, to start in this fall. Awesome. Uh, and we so we've been working um, with the four associates degree programs in the state on articulation agreements. I think my colleague uh, Rehab Sadadine is on here as well, mm -hmm. and we've been we've been working through this this Center of Workforce Innovation um, to power those um, articulation agreements. Um, just so everyone knows, uh, we don't have any, we did not have any bachelor's degree programs in respiratory therapy in the state of New Jersey, mm -hmm. and really not very many opportunities on um, in the region or even on the East Coast. So we're really excited to provide this degree advancement pathway so that the um, the two-year institutions, you know, that are, that are, that continue to to um, to be the major providers, the major engines of the respiratory care workforce, um, we really do look at uh, this as a as a partnership that you know we need everyone. Similar to nursing, I put a comment about that. Um, we're not competitors in this space. We all need to work together and work closely with our healthcare partners to understand, you know, how best to. Um, design these pathways to, to serve them. So I'm really excited about everything here. Um, but we do have our website up. We've been, uh, we've got our applications ready and um, we'll be reaching out to um, to everyone really, uh, you know, uh, this, this entire um, constituency here to let you know, you know, what, how we're ready to jump in and um, get involved here. So um, you can reach out to me directly uh, with any questions about this and and we're we're ready to we're ready to move and I'm just I was just now typing a comment to everybody that I'll just um, uh, I just want to say that um, these initiatives are really fantastic you know and the way that um, your the the collaborative um, and very synergistic tone of these initiatives um, the way everyone is saying well we've done this we, we piloted it, we've shown that it works. Now we're gonna make it available to everyone to implement is really, really good. Um, so I'll stop there, but um, thanks. Thank you, Catherine, for the opportunity um, to give that shout out. And and um, also to, to let you know that our program is moving forward and we're ready. Awesome. Thank you, Roberta, appreciate it. Thank you. So we, do not have any additional questions. I would ask that if you do have a question, please enter it in the chat now. Um, but if we don't have any, it looks like you're gonna get a little extra time in your day. Uh, okay, here, I see something coming in right now. Uh, you gotta love virtual meetings. Okay, most of the certifications discussed here require that the candidates be at least 18 years to sit for the exams. How are you able to work with high school kids um, than when most of them turn 18 closer to their graduation um, from high school. This age limit has been a huge impediment in our experience to take the programs to high schools, especially CNA. So I don't know if Janet wants to jump in or if someone else wants to jump in. Um. I can jump in. Thank you. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize I was unmuted. Yeah, I can. I, I can jump in on that. So, so we actually we have. Uh, we actually here at Camden County, we have a partnership with Pensacola High School. Uh, we do require the students to be at least seventeen, um, and it has to be approved through the um, the nursing home whether or not they'll allow the students to be um, under eighteen. So seventeen is is the is the lowest age. Um, we haven't had any any problems with them being certified by the state either at 17 or going on 18. Great. So that might be a little known. Um, yeah, and then also uh, Camden County um, Technical School, they also have it as part of their four year high school. Um, curriculum. You know, their yeah, their their curriculum or their track. So I'm going to imagine that there, there may be a couple of the students that graduate at 17 as well. Awesome, thank you for that information, appreciate it. 
Okay, we have another question. Oh, no, that was, uh, oh, that was Roberta. Roberta Harvey, comment. Let's see. Is that it? Is that a question? Might be. Any other questions? We don't want to hold you, but we want this uh, meeting to serve as an opportunity for everyone to ask their initial questions anyway, um, understanding that all of documentation for this work will be on our website in an electronic repository or database, including the contact information for those education partners that worked on each of the um, connections, the pathway connection. Okay, well, we're going to give you extra time in your day. Um, we really appreciate all of um, the work of our education partners and all of the support of our um, industry partners. We could not have gotten this far without all of you. We know that this statewide pathways initiative is going to make our state greater because it's going to provide greater opportunity that is inclusive, that is transparent, that leads to individuals prospering uh, in careers that they enjoy, um, which will only benefit our economy. And so we couldn't be more excited to conclude year one. We are in the process of accepting um, uh, ideas from our centers for year two, which will be starting very soon. Uh, and we're excited about what the future has. More importantly, we're very excited about piloting or launching all of these programs so that students, adult learners, incumbent workers, job seekers can take advantage of all of this great work. Um, next slide, please. We do have a QR code for feedback. We're, we're you know, this is a living, breathing initiative, um, and we want to make sure that everyone's voice is heard and, you know, we, we pivot when ne necessary, and so your feedback is very uh, critical to that. I think we have about three, maybe four brief questions uh, for you to answer, so if you hold up your phone on the QR code with your camera open, uh, it should take you to those questions, and you could respond to those later. Um, Next slide. Yes, and here's another QR code that'll take you to a listing uh, and information about all of our future collaborative meetings for the month of April. Every collaborative meeting this month is focused on a different center of workforce in, uh, innovation. So you'll hear about all the work, all the collaboration that was done amongst all of our education partners and industry partners within our centers of workforce innovation. So, um, and of course, our, our project manager always uh, <laughs> asked me to make sure that we get you to follow us on social media. So here are our, all of our handles. Thank you so much. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at some of our other April collaborative meetings. Everyone have a great day. Thank you.